Printing has shaped humanity. Building on earlier East Asian models, the invention of the Gutenberg printing press in the 15th century revolutionized the spread of information. And now, with the emergence of 3D printing, the 3D printing of biological tissue has also become a reality. 3D printing of living tissue could lead to an age where organs need not be harvested from dwindling supplies of donors, but printed, perfectly customized for each patient. There are big hopes for 3D printing of living tissue. The amount of published research on the subject has grown tremendously, and companies are hungry to be the first to roll out printed organs for the market. The global market for 3D bioprinting is estimated to reach $1 billion by the early 2020s. Although the expectations are high, printing a complex organ like a liver is still far off. So how is tissue printed and could we ever print an organ? 3D bioprinting is very similar to traditional non-biological 3D printing and many 3D bioprinters are modified 3D printers, printing tissue instead of plastic figurines. Some bioprinters are adapted from 2D inkjet printers, with a lot of early research done with a modified HP DeskJet 500. 3D bioprinters are not loaded with plastic or metal, but with living cells and biomaterials. Bioprinting is quite challenging. Cells and biopolymers need to be handled carefully compared to plastic, the temperature must be kept low, and mechanical stress must be avoided. Cells are also picky about the environment they grow in, and the cell types and materials surrounding them in the printed product have to be thoroughly researched. 3D bioprinting can be divided into three phases. First, the shape of the bioprinted product is determined and a 3D model is created, like in non-biological 3D printing. In bioprinting, we can image the patient with an MRI or a CT scan to build a 3D model. Among others, Dr. Anthony Attala and colleagues at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine have studied 3D bioprinting a human ear-like structure, and they started the process with a CT scan to build a 3D model for printing. In the second phase, this model is sent to the printer, which then prints the tissue layer by layer. The 3D information is translated into stacked 2D layers that the printer understands and can add one on top of the other. Finally, the printed tissue is allowed to mature. A bioreactor supplying ideal growth conditions can be used to let the construct mature outside of the body until the tissue has developed and is ready for transplantation. The printed ear was a prototype, but nonetheless cartilage tissue formed as the ear matured. One major difficulty with printing living material in 3D is to make the 3D structure maintain its shape while providing a suitable environment for the cells to grow in. The key to solving this problem is to find an appropriate bio-ink. Bio-ink is the material that is used to print tissue and is made of cells and biological polymers and man-made polymers suitable for interacting with the living material. The stiffer the bio-ink is made with the polymers, the better the printed tissue can hold up its shape. But if we make the liquid too stiff, it's hard to mix the cells into the material and cells won't grow in the printed constructs. Cells need a watery and soft environment to thrive. A trick many bioinks use is to cross-link the polymers after printing to create a firm network. This makes the ink liquid enough for printing and then changes the printed ink solid enough for creating a desired shape while providing cells a suitable environment to live. One popular polymer for bioprinting is alginate that is extracted from seaweed and crosslinks when it comes in contact with a calcium chloride solution. Another option is to use light to crosslink a light sensitive polymer like gelma that is partially made of gelatin. The printing process has been worked out for several cell types, but there are lots of obstacles before an organ can be printed. 
Most organs consist of many cell types and connective tissue that need to integrate into one unit working together on multiple jobs. For example, the cells of the liver perform complex and varied tasks together, ranging from cleaning blood of poisons like alcohol to storing sugar as glycogen for later use. Recreating these elaborate biochemical functions is no easy task. Another crucial obstacle to printing an organ is growing a network of blood vessels branching into tiny capillaries throughout the organ. Capillaries are what keep cells alive, because they provide the cells with nutrients and oxygen and take away waste that has been built up. But printing capillaries is really difficult. The ear was printed with a multi-head integrated tissue organ printer developed at the Wake Forest Institute to tackle organ printing, and it's capable of printing with different cells and bio-inks to create a stable large construct. But it's not capable of printing at the resolution needed for printing capillaries. Technologies like laser printing are starting to be able to print capillaries, but have other problems. The cells heat up when hit by lasers, which can damage them, and it's difficult to construct larger, stable tissue constructs with this method. One way to potentially get around this problem is to make clever use of bio-inks. One of the inks can be used as a placeholder that melts away after printing, leaving cavities in the structure. These cavities can then be filled with cells that form a vascular network. This method has been advanced by Dr. Jennifer Lewis and her team at the Wyss Institute at Harvard University to create blood vessels in a 3D printed construct supporting multiple cell types. When printing the ear, a different strategy was used. Due to the strength of the supporting bio-ink, the printing could be done quite loosely while still maintaining its ear shape. This left the ear hollow enough for the flow of nutrients and oxygen to all cells in the ear. The integrated tissue organ printer can print relatively simple tissue like cartilage, bone or muscle. And this is only possible after decades of intense research. This shows how difficult it is to move from printing these tissues to printing something like the kidney which has over 19 kilometers of tiny capillaries, precisely arranged for highly intricate blood filtration functions. Even though faced with this mammoth task, researchers in the field are not shying away from printing organs. The company Organovo is already printing liver and kidney tissue, although the field is not really at the stage yet where 3D printed tissue could be used in humans especially not tissue like kidney or liver, 3D printing of tissue is already making an impact. 3D printed tissue resembles natural tissue a lot more than cells grown in a single layer, and Organovo offers these tissues for drug screening, giving a more realistic picture of the effects of drugs on organs. If the bioprinting of organs ever becomes a reality, some are worried that it could turn into a technology dividing the quality of healthcare even more between rich and poor, allowing the rich to replace failing organs when the poor are left to die. Then again, the shortage of organ donors doesn't only affect the rich, and being able to print an organ could equalize the landscape, especially with the cost of 3D bioprinters coming down. Compared to the cost of surgical therapy or long-term drug treatment, 3D bioprinting could prove a very cheap and superior alternative in the future. Thank you for watching. Check out the other videos on this channel and subscribe for more content on cutting-edge biotechnology. A big thanks to Dr. Anthony Attala and the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine for providing footage on the bioprinting process. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on this video in the comments. See you again.